Hello, welcome to Let Me Bore You to Sleep. My name is Jason Newland. Please only listen to this when you can safely close your eyes. The whole point of these very very boring recordings on this very very boring podcast is as follows it's to be boring There you go, that's a good description. Only listen when you can safely close your eyes, if I hadn't already said that. And the reason I might sometimes repeat that sentence isn't because I care, it's because I just forget I've said it pretty much. Not that I don't care, obviously, but I just, it's not that I. I'm saying it twice because it's to make it twice as important although it is very important but I think we all need to take responsibilities for our own uh, actions you know if someone's silly enough to listen to a a sleep recording when they are in the middle of a a brain operation, you know, and actually doing surgery, then, you know, or an ambulance driver, or, you know, just it just kind of makes sense to not listen to stuff like this when you need to be awake. Although... I know not everybody listens to this or this podcast to to go to sleep. Some people listen to it for company, for I don't know. I'm kind of like a friend, the friend you never wanted. <laughs> I'm the I'm I'm this voice that you can listen to regularly maybe not daily depends but regularly you know a few times a week Um, one day I hope to be able to sort of say exactly when I'm going to make the next recording but I do try and do them every day I'll just let you know that is my intention but you know doesn't always work out that way because of a few things but one of the reasons is because I have other podcasts also that I uh, need to make recordings for like the Deep Sleep Whisper Hypnosis podcast which again I try and make very regular recordings for uh, again daily if I could and then I've got the Sleep Hypnosis Weekly or Weekly Sleep Hypnosis I forget what it's called but it's uh, I think it's Sleep Hypnosis Weekly podcast and I do a new recording every Friday supposedly I usually end up doing it on Saturday but it's weekly and I've stuck to the weekly thing um, for the last I don't know five weeks maybe six weeks and even that's a little bit of a a challenge sometimes I think it's it's not so it's not it's not the weekly bit it's the daily it's getting it on a specific 
day that probably gets so I don't like being told what to do not even by me you know so if I tell myself I need to do something I kind of rebel a little bit like no I'm not going to do it no don't have to you can't make me you're not the boss of me when actually I am and I obviously we're all the boss of ourselves but I, I like to just because of what I'm doing because every recording I ever make has underpinned relaxation whether it's chronic pain relief whether it's the sleep sessions whether it's relaxation sessions whether it's the whisper sleep whether it's these let me bore you to sleep is that sense of slowing down and relaxation that's part of the process I guess that is the foundations which all of this excuse me has been built and I guess the other foundations would be my knowledge experience education training whatever you want to call it of uh, therapy counselling hypnosis NLP uh, psychotherapy various things I've learnt along the way because I've got a degree in counselling and I've also obviously well not obviously but obvious to a lot of people listening to this I'm also um, a hypnotist as well and or you could say hypnotherapist because I've been thinking of this you know I've been studying hypnosis since, since January 1998 and I also started studying counselling as well possibly before that actually not with any intention of getting involved in counselling I didn't want to be a counsellor I didn't want to be a therapist but I did want to learn about myself I think really that was the main thing and I'm just fascinated by it fascinated by just the processes and it seems the mind to me just seems quite magical to me that is magic and what the mind can do is just extraordinary um, and for me it's less about the brain but more about the mind and I know that ultimately it is about the brain because you know a tiny change to the brain can transform how you think but then you can do that through the mind so I don't know I just I just really find it fascinating and that's the underpinnings of what I do because I've mixed hypnosis 
with actual therapy with actual you know having spent three years at university studying therapy and how to be a therapist and, in, and added that to the hypnosis and the other stuff that I've learnt the NLP and everything so I think it makes me a little bit of a different type of I don't know if I can I class myself as a therapist if I make no money out of it if I just do it online for just to help people without any financial gain if I can then that's what I am I suppose I am a therapist but it's more a an intention so you know when I started doing this I st uh, online recordings and the first thing I did was a video on MySpace in what 2006 and it was, it was a black and white video and I was I had this sponge it was like a, a car sponge that you clean a car with and on it I had I taped a piece of paper or a piece of card with my website jasonnewland.com on it and that's, that was the setup for my first video and subsequent videos for a while and I had a webcam but the picture wasn't very good in colour so I put it onto black and white and it was a much clearer picture and uh, I had my desk so I had the camera in front of my desk I think it was um, possibly the camera was attached to my laptop so it was you know it was an external camera because I've not found any laptop cameras to be with the inbuilt ones to be of any good, any use. So I just distracted myself there. I've got the TV running and TV running it's like some kind of wind up television my TV is running can't you hear the all the noise of the of the water the engine pumping away keeping the television going oh it's lovely and I had yes yeah, so I had the video camera And it's a webcam. I was at my desk in my bedroom in the Buddhist community that I was living in. And behind me, I had a bookcase, well, I had about two or maybe three bookcases full of books uh, hypnosis, therapy, you know, you name it, uh, all kinds of books. And I had loads of counselling books, loads of books on uh, Carl Rogers, uh, I had books on Gestalt Therapy, Fritz Perls, uh, you know, amongst others. Yeah, I had no intention of being a counsellor. Didn't want to be a counsellor. Didn't interest me, really. Well, it interested me, but it didn't. I didn't really give it any real thought. It wasn't until 2007 that I started thinking about it around kind of the summertime. So I had this, <clears throat> my voice is weird lately. I've had a bit of a cough, but 
That's all right, I'm not bothered. Do I look bothered? Do I look bothered? I'm not bothered. Mm. So I had... The books that I no longer uh, have got. I've lost my library. But I'm going to get it back. I've decided. I'm going to buy one book a week. <sighs> until I've got all my books back that I had before and more I love books love reading and I'm going to start reading more less time online more time reading that's my plan because what comes out is you know you need stuff going in in order for stuff to come out. So if you stop eating, you stop pooing. You know, eventually. So it's kind of, I'm talking every day, I'm making, well not every day, but quite often, it daily I'm making recordings. I need to have information going in. Um, I f well, that's how I feel. You know, in order to improve what I do, maybe not with these, because these are just, it's just me being boring. I could read the telephone book or tell you about uh, the first time I had an ingrown toenail. You know, I mean, I could talk for an hour about that. But, so there's, there's no, <laughs> This, there was no training you know you can't uh, I don't think there's any any college courses for being extremely tediously boring it's, it's, it's a kind of a gift I was going to say it's a gift that keeps on giving but it's basically it's uh, probably a gift that keeps on taking maybe you know in a different scenario you wouldn't want to be listening to this. You know, if you was at work, probably you wouldn't want to be listening to someone talking really boringly because it could be draining, perhaps. But in this scenario, because um, I'm guessing A lot of you, me listening to this with your eyes closed, maybe lying down on a flat surface of some kind, or sitting in a chair, perhaps sitting back in a chair, or if the chair doesn't go back, then well, you can't sit back in it, can you? It's, uh, I've got a chair that goes back. It's, uh, so it leans back. It's, it's like a lazy boy, but a, a really cheap version. But it's been fine. I've had it for... I don't know how long I've had it for. Over th yeah, three and a half years, if not longer, and it's now wearing out. Like the the skin is starting to to peel off. It looks like it's been out in the sun, and it's you know. Do you remember that? I d Does anybody see? I, you know, when you get a suntan. I mean, I only, I burn. I don't really get suntans. So I burn and then the skin peels off, you know, after maybe a week or whatever. I used to love that. It hasn't happened for years because I stay out of the sun. But that is quite nice, isn't it? That peely bit when you just peel the skin off. Like, oh, oh, I think it's quite nice. 
but uh, as I said, it hasn't happened to me for a long time. I think the last time it happened, I got no idea why my voice just went so squeaky then. The last time it happened was. Let me think. I think it was about. It was Easter, and I visited my dad because it was also his birthday, and it was probably about two thousand and nine. 2010, 2009, you know, some, yeah, probably about that. And I went to my dad's and I got up in the morning, I had my breakfast, and then the you know, then dinner was going to be about one o'clock. Lunch was about one o'clock. So I had two options. Why? Well, two options. Either I went out, or I stayed in and talked to everybody because it was family was there. You know, and so I thought I'll go out. So I went to the beach. And I had a book, and I don't remember what the book was. Huh. I wonder what the book was. I don't know, probably The Adventures of Noddy or something like that. And I was just sitting there found a nice little place that I could just sit there and it was such a lovely day it was proper nice really warm what you could say even hot sun but I didn't feel that hot it was a bit breezy because I was on the beach and if you're on the beach you can if there's a breeze and there's the spray from the water someone was having a wee by the side of me so I was getting splashed back but nah not really because of the, the the sea there was like that continuous little droplets of wa water spray ish stuff plus the breeze a little bit of wind turned it into breeze and a little bit of wind here and there and and there was Mr. Sunny Mr. Sun Sun in the sky and I was just there had the sun on my face oh it's nice reading a book just enjoying not having to talk or listen to anyone else talk that was nice just you know it's just peaceful it wasn't that many people on the beach there was a few I didn't count them but uh, there was a few but it wasn't you know, it wasn't that busy so that people was setting up right next to me you know so I didn't have to listen to their conversations. I mean, in some ways I wouldn't mind, but it never, never really worked out. I don't go on beaches very often, but every time I have, I've never had anyone set up a blanket next to me who I would choose <laughs> I don't know how to explain that but it's just 
you know, it's yeah. So I remember once, no, twice. I actually tried to sunbathe twice. I'd never done it before, not really, because I burn. But I took suntan lotion, and again, I didn't like suntan lotion when I was a teenager because, well, with, with getting spots and stuff on my face, I didn't really want to be adding more grease, greasy stuff to my skin. But I remember I went, when I was 16, I lived in the flat above the chip shop that I worked. And I, I had a flat roof directly outside my bedroom. And the and the, the bathroom actually. Yeah, the bedroom and the bathroom. There's also an extractor fan from the chip shop which would come on. So if I had a day off in the week, it'd just be just be like a helicopter inside my head it was so loud but on my day off on the day where it was closed on a Sunday it was so peaceful and in this in a real hot summer we had a few nice days always get a few nice days and I went out and the flat the flat roof then led to a big flat roof that had nothing on it. And the extractor fan was on my part of the roof, yay. Um, but then the rest of the, f the roof was flat. So I climbed onto that. I wasn't really climbing, I just walked through. Although I would have climbed, because I was very much like a little monkey back then. And uh, I could climb up things, you know, so it was, I was young, I was strong and wiry and I was, and I had a tail, I had a little tail and I decided to sunbathe. I thought, you know what, that's what and I hung up, no I didn't, I said, you know what, I'm going to sunbathe. I probably watched, probably watched Wurzel Gummidge on television first, and maybe some political show, because I've always, I've always, I don't know why, really, I seem to have always sort of had an interest in politics, like following the politics, you know, politicians' interviews and watching the parliament, you know, watching the debates they have, more so now than then, but still always, because you know, every erection that has been, I've had, uh, f I think since 1987, I think was the first one, that I, was it the first 87? I think it was, I think that was the first one that I sat up all night to watch. Before that I was a kid, the, the, the erection before that I was, you know, little. Well, not little, but I was at school. So I couldn't stay up all night to watch stuff like that. But the, the general erection that was on I think 1987, that was my very first one to watch. And it's on all night. It's on all night and then they, they 
give the results you know as they come in it's the same process that still happens today uh, not today but you know when there when it happened the last one was I think two years ago yeah <sighs> Anyway, I wasn't even old enough to vote, but I was still interested. And you know what I did? I walked up to the, I think it was it, was it a pizza place that sold kebabs or was it a kebab place that sold pizzas? I'm not sure. I'm sure it was a pizza place that also had kebabs. Anyway, I went in there and my friend, well, someone I knew, I knew the person that owned it. I used to chat to him. And so I went in there and I got a pizza and I got the biggest, largest, massivest pizza you could buy. It was huge. Sweet corn and pineapple. Uh, pizza always been my favourite always will it's, unless uh, there's a way of the thing is I haven't had every single pizza you know style I suppose so there will be probably some kinds of pizzas that I've not tested so nah, I might one day be introduced to a pizza that equals the the love that I have for the sweet corn and pineapple pizza it's possible I, will, I would say anything's possible but you know what I have in the past I have spent hours staring at a pen lying on a table just a normal pen a writing pen and I've stared at it wishing it to lift off the table and spin round in the air but it didn't happen so not everything is possible. But it's okay because what use would that have been anyway? Oh, I'm an inch of spinner and a pen around. Okay. And what are you going to do with that? With that power of spinning a pen around? I don't know exactly how long did it take for you to to do that a couple of hours what just two hours so you just started two hours ago and you and, and it worked well two hours this time and maybe another 20 times in the past that I've tried ah. I'd like to think you know because I did try and do that I'd like to think that if I was able to uh, use telekinesis to pick up an object with my mind control it with my mind like such as a writing pen and it lifted up off of the table and started to spin around or move around slowly then I could do more exciting things 
uh, that could change the world. So maybe stop it from spinning, spin it the other way. Or stop it spinning and then turn the pen around so that it's standing straight up and then just move it down so it balances on the table. Yeah. But then would that be life changing? Now, I watched the X-Men films and Magneto is a character and he can control metal. See, I like that idea to be able to control metal. You know, to be able to... To be fair, not just metal, I'd like to be able to... Con not control, but be able to manipulate matter. <laughs> I don't want much out of life, do I? I want to be able to. Con I just want to just be in charge of the world and the universe, and control every single atom in the universe. That's all I want. I don't want much. So I just. Uh, I have no idea how I got to this conversation from sunbathing. I don't know how that happened. How did that happen? So I'm sunbathing on the rooftop on a towel. And it's beautiful. There's actually something absolutely beautiful about, it's a long time since I've done it, but there's something beautiful about sunbathing, about laying down and being practically naked other than, you know, obviously you've got to, you've got to keep your modesty. So I wore socks. No, I I wore uh, probably shorts, wore shorts, and and that was it. And I used to be embarrassed about my body. Andre has just arrived into the room. How wonderful! Last night I did something different for him. Well, I say last night, but you know, when I went to bed at about five this morning, normally I put him in his cage, which is in the storeroom. It's not, it's not a big stacked storeroom full of stuff. It's pretty much an empty room, but it's cool in there. It's dark, kind of quite likes that. But, he doesn't really like being in the cage. He likes it when he's asleep. He's okay with that. But, you know, there's times when he wakes up when he wants to run around, play, you know, and do his thing, really, have a bit of space. So what I thought is, instead of putting him in his cage, I'm just gonna leave him in the living room. I'm gonna close the door, close my bedroom door so hopefully I can't hear him if he does scratch at the door or whatever but he'll have the whole room to destroy at his, at his own pleasure and he's got water, he's got food he's got various different places that he can sleep he's got his bag that he sleeps in he's got a, an old jacket of mine that he sleeps in now behind the door He's got 
another like it's a, like a cat scratcher but with a big uh, partition that you can sleep in at the bottom he sometimes sleeps on that or in there sometimes he sleeps underneath the chair so he's got lots of different places he's also got all his most of his toys are in here some of them are in the bedroom in the kitchen and in the hallway he moves stuff around but a lot of his stuff is in the in the, here including his girlfriend which is an old slipper of mine which means he can he can have a date you know spend some quality time with his girlfriend so he's got everything he needs in this room and I guarantee you most ferrets that are apart from those you know living in the wild of course but most ferrets would not have a lot of space for long periods of time you know they'll be in a cage most of the time and then they'll be allowed to come out and play for maybe a period of time every day and if they've got kids you know if kids are in the house the ferrets will probably get out a bit more often because they're a lot of fun you know to play with but To have a whole flat or apartment, whatever you want to call it, at his disposal is something that I imagine not many ferrets have. He's got the hallway, he's got the bedroom, the kitchen, the bathroom and this room, the living room. He's got all those rooms that he can run around in and uh, cause havoc the weird thing about it is I kind of miss taking him to bed and putting him into his cage and giving him a kiss and say goodnight because I don't want to disturb him like last when I went to bed he was asleep I didn't want to disturb him because as soon as he sees that door close he'll be scratching if I close the door when he's awake he'll be scratching at the door for hours possibly so but then I came in and usually when I get up I'll go and get him I'll wait, you know if he's awake cool if he's if he's asleep I'll still pick him up and bring him out if he's fast asleep I'll put him into my bed and just put the cover over so he can just be asleep as long as he wants without being disturbed But then I've got some contact with him, you know, even if it's only for a short time. But when I got up today, I just came into the living room, struggled to open the door because he'd been ripping the carpet up. Yay. And uh, he was fast asleep. And he stayed fast asleep for about two hours after I got up. And then he came over, I think I was recording this. And he just came in, wouldn't he come in, he walked, walked over, had some food, had some water, and didn't even say hello to me. Now I feel like we're living separate lives. So I don't like that. 
because he's so he just does his own thing he kind of doesn't really need me as long as I give him food and I take him out for a walk when he wants me to and I'm there to play with him when he wants he kind of doesn't need me you know it's uh, I like it when he jumps all over me and even though it's a hassle sometimes because I'm trying to do something else it's still you know I might be eating my breakfast or something it's still nice just to have his attention I think anyway so I'm sunbathing and basically I burnt you know it's just the uh, sun I got sunburned which is what happens but before that happened I felt wonderful absolutely felt wonderful lying there in the sun felt this beautiful feeling and also I think because of the job I had I was working fairly long hours I think so it was nice and it was very busy as well so it was nice to relax and so I do love the sun I love sunbathing it's one of those things that I love but I'm allergic to it if you know what I mean I kind of my skin doesn't fit with the sun and it never has and when I was on the beach on my dad's birthday I got a sunstroke it's like I was only on there for about an hour so I love the sun I don't like looking at it because it's very bright but I love the sun but it just there's something really beautiful about just laying there and when I was 17 I went on a beach where I was living I went on the beach and I just thought you know what I'm skinny you know I'm embarrassed about my body which I was at the time um, but I thought you know what Everyone's lying on their, on their, not their flannels, their towels. There's a very small person lying on a flannel, but there's basically they're lying there with their eyes closed. They weren't looking at me, so I just had my swimming trunks on, probably, or my shorts, and just lied there on the on the beach, and it was beautiful sound of the sea and the sun just yeah it was lovely but you know again the results of that it was that I can't do that it's a shame really because it's something that I really like. like I've got a friend who said he absolutely loves Indian food like uh, you know the spices and stuff he can't eat it though because it makes him ill he doesn't like it but he loves it you know and I'm the same with the sun I love the sun but can he go out in it when I do go out on it I it's short bursts you know the only parts of me that manage to weather the sun is my arms and a little my face a little bit now as well 
because that gets seen by the sun. But my upper body, my legs, no, my back, my chest, basically all the area around my nipples, you know, the whole chest, ribs, that kind of area, it burns. And a burnt nipple is not something to write a poem about. <laughs> That's going to be the title of my book. A sunburnt nipple is not something to write a poem about. That's a great title for a book. Come on. Even if what I said is annoying you, you could still say, you know what, that is quite a good title. You can't argue that one. We can argue it, but I still think it's a good title. Yeah. <laughs> I don't remember ever sunbathing I sat in the sun but with fully maybe t-shirt yeah when I was yeah about 2006 I was in the garden. This is at the Buddhist community that I was living in. I lived there for about like two and a half years. So I was in the garden on a reclined sunbed or like garden chair. It wasn't really a sunbed, it was a sun. It's like a garden chair that reclines. And normally what I'd do is I'd get in the shade and I could read a book and stuff. And, you know, it's lovely. And that's what I bought it for. Well, on this occasion, I decided to listen to an audio tape on, I guess it was CD or something. And it was uh, Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway. That was the the audio tape and I'd read the book and you know probably a couple of times actually it's a little bit scared to start with but it's okay I got through it uh, I wasn't so scared to, to read it the second time though <laughs> uh, I just felt the fear and read it anyway and uh, so I just I thought you know what I'm doing I'm just going to listen to this audio while I'm just relaxing. Now that's a plan. Which is what I did. What I didn't realise is I had the audio on repeat. The I had the setting of the uh, CD player on repeat. And... I thought, well, I've got about 40 minutes, 50 minutes, and then I'll go back inside. And I was kind of partly in the shade at that time. But then, with the sun moving, of course, the sun doesn't move, we move, but, you know, with the sun moving around, it became, I became more sanitized sanitized sun raid and uh, with the thing being on repeat I didn't realize because I was you know and I woke up about four hours I fell asleep woke up four hours later And, uh, yeah, it was very, very red. It might have been three hours later, it might have been two hours later, but four hours. There's no point exaggerating unless you do it properly, is there? You know, if it was an hour and I decided I'm going to exaggerate, there's no point saying it was an hour and ten minutes. That's not a good exaggeration. 
I think exaggeration should be worth the effort, you know. But not too much, you know, because I wouldn't say, well, actually, it was it was five days, or you know, and I'm still out there now. I'm still out there now as I'm talking to you here. I've turned to dust, you know. It's uh, no, I, you know, I try not to exaggerate because well, it's lying, isn't it? Really, it's basically is we can uh, we can pretend it's not, but that's all exaggeration is. But I think exaggeration is more than that. It can be an excitement, getting carried away with the story. Because I, you know, I lie all the time with what I say on air. But it's not lies, it's just making stuff up. It's just, it's exaggeration or it's embellishment, you know, whatever you want to call it. But I think some people that exaggerate, they're not intentionally lying. They're just excited with what they're telling. And they want you to enjoy the story perhaps so they add a few extra bits in otherwise it, you might not enjoy it as much you know but who am I to guess what other people's reasoning for certain activities that they indulge in maybe because they don't know I really don't know at all what I do know is I need to go to the toilet <laughs> at some point yippity doo I need a poo so 57 minutes in I'm planning on making I need to make my sleep hypnosis weekly recording which should have been done yesterday which is why I didn't do it because I don't like to be I don't like the pressure you know what I mean so I'm gonna I'm gonna do it later on And then I'm going to uh, do a deep sleep whisper one later on as well. And I've got rid of, I had to get rid of most of my websites. So I've only got the jasonnewland.com website now because I had to cut down the expense of running these things so that's what I've done I've cut down so the only expense I have now or to, you know, to run this free service is the internet and the podcast Spreaker podcast which is a fair amount of money actually considering but it's worth it because it's a great a great podcast host Spreaker is so yeah so that's it trying to reduce the costs because because it's a free service I just don't have the money to, to pay for it and even though I've had a few donations and a bit of help it still doesn't cover it or what well, didn't doesn't cover what I was paying so uh, now that I've reduced it down it should be useful and because I just keep ending up with no money I don't know why well, I do know why because I'm not working but it just gets a little bit the novelty value is sort of reduced somewhat of uh, having 
very small amounts of money not quite as exciting as it once was so yeah I'm going to uh, try to just reduce outgoings it should be cool but I'm going to continue with the podcasts forever and ever and ever so there so today is a Saturday so I wish you a really groovy weekend and I'll see you next time bye